Rodgers. And there is no doubt these past couple days, Meredith, that offense, it's been very tough for them. There's no doubt about it. And, Bob, really, what a difference a week makes. Last weekend, the Yankees swept the White Sox. They won their sixth in a row, and they had the best record in baseball over a five-week span. They've now last, lost four out of their last five. You mentioned the offense, which is spiraling. They're hitting just 197 with runners in scoring position, and they've managed just two earned runs or less in seven out of their last ten games. And I asked Aaron Boone about the struggling offense last night. Look, anytime offensively you don't mount much or you you know you struggle to score runs you know it always has that look to being flat i mean that's just as long as we do this it, it kind of has that look so i know these guys um are preparing i know how much they care i know i know what they expect of themselves so i know there's a level of frustration that it's not happening so we just got to keep working at it we try to be consistent and the last few games uh we don't control too much the sun, I guess. Uh, we always try to attack, but uh, I feel like we attack on on, on bad pitch and we, we miss too many really good pitch and, and too many good opportunities. But um, I mean, it's just a game. Tomorrow is another day and, and try to win. And Aaron Boone continued to remain positive on this morning's Zoom when he was asked about the offense, saying he is incredibly confident that this group is going to hit. Now, Flash, you mentioned shaking up the lineup. This is actually the 52nd different lineup the Yankees have used this year in 53 games. They do have two guys playing in somewhat unfamiliar positions. Tyler Wade gets the nod in center field. It's his first major league start in center. He did start 13 times in the minors in center field. And Miguel and Duhar will make his second start at first base I asked Aaron Boone about the decision to put Wade in center field certainly someone that I feel comfortable putting anywhere on the field defensively and uh yeah uh you know obviously can't can't run Gardy every single day and um you know hopefully he can provide a little bit of a spark for us at the bottom and and run around and do his thing on defense Brendan Cuddy you have the next question Aaron Andujar at first today. Yeah. Do you see any chance where he can get a regular reps at that position, or do you think that's more just a fill-in spot for him? We'll see. I mean, obviously, with a lefty going today, wanting to get a lot of righties in there, uh, you know, an opportunity there to create it for him to get in there. So we'll just see. You know, uh, it's it's definitely fluid for us right now, and uh, just kind of play some matchups. Uh, there's opportunities out there for people to take advantage of, and uh, we'll see how it unfolds. The Yankees will turn to Michael King to lead the way today. It'll be his first start of the season. We've seen him come out of the bullpen with a lot of success so far this year. I asked King yesterday how much his preparation changes when he's starting. Actually, not too much. Um, it's I feel like a little bit easier because I don't need to pay attention to the pitchers before me. Um, but for the most part, I feel like my role would be to flip a lineup a couple times anyways. Um, so I kind of have to have that same preparation as to how to get a guy out multiple times. Um, and it's going to be the same same kind of approach. How much are you looking forward to the opportunity to start a game? Yeah, I, I can't wait. Um, I know I got a couple opportunities last year and felt like I didn't really capitalize on it. So I'm hoping to capitalize on my first one this year. And when you look at that Tigers lineup, what stands out to you? What do you think could potentially be a challenge for you? Yeah, a lot of lefties, um, and I, I definitely uh, feel more comfortable with righties, and I've had better numbers in, in my career against righties. Um, but I just got to get that change up working and get that glove side sinker working, and, and uh, I feel like I'll, I'll have some confidence and have some success. Obviously, he's got the sinker that played well, and the change up's been something he's had in his back pocket throughout the, his progression through the minor leagues. He's always been kind of looking for a, a third pitch, whether it's a curveball or a slider, and he kind of developed that cutter this offseason and we weren't sure where exactly it would fit in or how well he'd command it, but it's something that right out of the gates in spring training showed some uh, confidence in both uh, on the arm side and the glove side, depending on the hitter he's facing. But it's definitely a nice mix in with the, the two seamer where it gives him a chance to X, you know, the side of the plate on the arm side, you know, inside to righties or back door to lefties. Um, so that's definitely a nice and encouraging progress for him. 
You heard Matt Blake talking about King's newly developed cutter. He's thrown that pitch about 28% of the time this season. Now, King is pitching on four days rest. Last time out, he threw 54 pitches. I asked Aaron Boone how far they would push King today, and he said he probably has north of 60 pitches. There were some roster moves. Davey Garcia and Albert Abreu are optioned back to AAA after the game last night, and they brought up Nestor Cortez Jr. as well as Nick Nelson to 